What's up, everybody? Welcome to part two of the Q&A with Dr. Austin Brocky and Dr. Jordan Feigenbaum. If you haven't already, go check out part one. I will include a link to that video in the top right-hand corner of your screen. Austin and Jordan are both certified starting strength coaches. They recently hosted a workshop, squat and deadlift workshop here at Untamed Strength. So this video is going to be part two uh, of them answering the questions that we asked and giving you a look at some of the clips that they did during the coaching portion of this workshop. Chest there. Don't lift your chest. Good. More hips on the way up. Hips. All right, walk it in. So we need to talk. Now that the weight's getting heavy, you're getting scared that it's folding you in half. So what you're doing out of the bottom is your back angle is immediately getting more vertical out of the bottom. That means you're lifting your chest. And again, when the weight's real heavy, that's what causes your bar speed to totally crash and you'll fail a heavy weight. So the way you get through that is staying like this. Staying back here, driving this up without lifting this up too early. Eventually your chest has to open up at the top, obviously to finish the rep, right? But that's what we call staying in your hips, doing this to get through that point. So it actually, you might need to think about keeping your chest down a little bit longer. You know what I mean? So that you don't lift it a little too early. Okay. All right. First question for this video, the guy was asking about his hips during the deadlift. They corrected him, told him how he should start the deadlift. And uh, he was saying, my hips feel really high. Is this okay? Am I supposed to be feeling like this? Well, I'm just saying, but in so, general, people will say, you know, why are my hips so high? It does feel like I'm doing a kind of a stiff legged deadlift. And certainly if your hips were lower before, you're going to feel like your legs are straighter. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because as your hips raise, your knees are uh, a little bit uh, straighter. I'm going to tell you two things though. Thing one, you don't have a choice. So, you're going to do that, do it that way and get in that position before you pull no matter what, whether I tell you to raise your hips or not, when the weight's heavy enough for you to have to do it right. So for a one RM pull, you're gonna get to that position anyway. Thing two, uh, you can't stiff leg deadlift a heavy weight. It just won't budge. And again, if you actually do stiff leg a deadlift, like no shit stiff leg a deadlift, you won't be able to do close to what you deadlift. Yeah, um, so all that being said, if you don't feel it in your quads, or you don't feel, that's not a good litmus test for me. More so is reviewing video and saying, did your hips move prior to the weight leaving the floor? Because if your hips move prior to leaving the weight leaving the floor, you did it wrong. If they dropped, your hips are too high. If they raised, your hips are too low. And that's all based on setup. So the setup should feel super uncomfortable. You know, I don't like this, I don't wanna be here. Somebody save me, but you can save yourself by just lifting the weight. <laughs> but you have to be uncomfortable first. Right. Okay. Tom, Tom Campitelli, another starting strength coach, is famous for saying, you should not be comfortable. <laughs> and then if you're comfortable, he knows you're wrong. A situation where doing what feels good to you is oftentimes you know, not an ideal deadlift setup. Just the amount of tension that you need to generate off the floor oftentimes results in some discomfort. Um, not pain, but it's just not a comfortable position to be in, right? Yeah. But with that said, like to click, like, you, to make sure you know the difference between a stiff leg deadlift and a regular deadlift, a stiff leg deadlift has no quad involvement off the floor pretty much, right? It's just ripped off the floor with your back. Your leg, your knees are essentially al almost already extended. So you can't really like push the bar off the floor with your, with your quads at all. Right. And if you're doing that, then you're not stiff leg deadlifting. In a proper deadlift setup, your shoulders are, are always gonna be just a little bit in front of the bar and your arms will be angled back a tiny bit but oftentimes when I, when I see people who, um, my identification, like what he said, for people who are stiff leg deadlifting is when I see their shoulders just way too far over the bar. They're like way over it. Cause you can imagine if their hips are high enough that it's a stiff leg deadlift, I just identify their shoulders being way too far forward, their arms angled way too far backward um, compared to a regular deadlift. And that kind of makes, that kind of comports with what he was saying, that when your arms are angled way that far back, all of a sudden it's gonna swing forward on you. What we were trying to do is back to the center. This is where we're Here we go. Good. Okay, sure, no, 135 is good. Okay. Okay, cut an inch off that. Good. Keep your chin down. Three sets of five right now. Probably three sets of five. Yeah, it works. Alright, five. Okay. You can go faster than that on the way down. Okay. Yeah, but we just basically. No, 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 no. Yeah, this is a, you're gonna have yes, one more rep, just like that. 
Good. Excellent. A little into your knees. Stay back. That's better. That was good. Nice. Your first two reps, you slid into your knees a little bit, and then okay. the last three, you stayed back. Got it. Was okay. Next question came from a baseball player. He was saying, okay, I understand all this starting strength stuff. I understand the strength training template and program, but I'm a baseball player. What should I do? And he was referring to sports-specific training. Off-season, you do that. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't do anything else anyway. I think, I mean, think about it like this. What are the cardiovascular demands of baseball? None. 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 You have to run to Evidence. First base. Prince Fielder. <laughs> yeah. None. Look, re really? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. okay, so they're none. All right. What things for baseball can you practice in the gym that carry over? <clears throat> There's only one answer here. None. No, they're none. <laughs> B because baseball is only be practiced at speed at that high skill level on the baseball field or in the batting cage or something like that. You can't do it in the gym because anything you do in the gym is going to mess you up. You swing a heavy bat, it messes up your swing. You throw a heavy ball, it messes up your throw. Okay? So the only thing for baseball specific training is practice. Right? Skills need practice. Strength at, needs training. That's exactly. basically what, we, what we're saying. So in the gym, all of your stuff should be strength training. This is general. All right? And that's going to get to apply, be applied specifically during practice and then during the season. The point is, if you're traveling and doing all these games, you don't have the recovery resources that right. you need to run the starting strength linear progression. All right? However, if that's not necessarily your case, if you only play you know, one or two games a week or one game a week, then you can run this. Because you shouldn't be running, you shouldn't be, that none of that is good, is, it will make you a better, better baseball player. And if your coaches think so, then you know, somebody needs to question them. Because I'd like to know how, right? Because being more skilled will make you a better baseball player. Exactly. Right? Yeah. But if you were maybe, you know, just a few pounds heavier, for example, not like 40, but a few, and you had tripled your squat over the course of the next six months from where it is right now. Actually, you squatted like 315 today, so never mind. You're not going to be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you're already reasonably strong. You're probably stronger than a lot of other baseball Which players. Which is why you're a good baseball player. Right? Though. But... <laughs> You know, you, right? keep, you, keep, you keep training, getting this general strength base up. You practice the skills as much as you can. No problem with that. It's fine. Yeah, and I, so I would make the argument that anything that's not either baseball-specific training, which is fielding, hitting, or practice in like, like a, a practice game type, type of situation, or that's getting you stronger, is a waste of time. It's not a good use of your resources. So everything else should be st spent sleeping, studying, or chasing women. Or making money. I mean, that's it. That's all you have. So now, this is the stance that I want. It's about an inch. So stand on the middle of your foot. Don't look down anymore. Just stand still looking straight forward. Okay. okay. So you guys can see, shins are about an inch away from the bar. Stance is maybe a little narrower than her hip width or so. And her toes are turned out 10, maybe a little more than that, degrees or so. This is the stance that we like. Okay. So we spent all this time getting her stance exactly where we want relative to the bar. If in any subsequent step she moves the bar, what happened to step one? It got all messed up, right? So what I need all of you guys to help me with is to watch the plates while she's setting up. If you see the plates roll, it means you messed up. Okay. It means you moved the bar away from the middle of your foot. You guys notice we keep coming back. Everything is middle of the foot here. So right now the bar is directly over the middle of her foot. If she moves it, it's not there anymore. So for the remaining steps, and you say I wrote it up there, do not move the bar for the remaining steps. Okay. Like even a, even a little bit. Okay. okay? So mm -hmm. now you're gonna bend at the waist and not at the knees. Take your grip outside your shins. So you guys see the bar moved. She pulled the bar back into her shins. So stand back up, step away. This is how I'm gonna make you guys not move the bar because it's gonna be punishment for moving the bar. <laughs> That's good. Now, okay. bend over, literally, like, okay. gently. Don't move the bar. Okay. There you go. Now, shins go forward to the bar. Knees go out into your elbows. Now, this is a good position. I want you to take your head up and look a little forward and lift your chest as hard as you can. Hard, hard, hard. Where's your balance right now? In the middle of your foot? Um, or on your toes? 
Yeah. No, it's on my toes. Midfoot? Okay. Yeah. Lift this, squeeze this real tight, and then drag the bar up your legs. That is a very good deadlift. Set it down. Let go, step away, and now you're gonna practice that for a total of five singles. The first set we do is gonna be five separate singles, so you practice that setup procedure. Once we start doing sets, you can do it with, without letting go of the bar. So she did her stance, next is grip. Shins and knees combined. Now lift your chest, hard, 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 a little more. Drag. Set it down. See, she's finishing big chest at the top. And that's how you guys finish a deadlift too. You don't finish with a caved in chest. Everything is big and strong at the top, okay? Next question was asked about cutting weight. Now this guy's not overweight, trying to lose a whole bunch of weight. He's just trying to lose a few pounds to make weight for his powerlifting meet that's a few months out. And he was asking, how far out should I start to cut weight? I really don't want to drop all that weight at the very end. Austin and Jordan proceeded to convince him that cutting weight was not a great idea for him in particular. So when you cut weight, you are going to lose some strength. How much are you planning to cut or how much do you want to cut? Just uh, maybe about five. To what, 198s or 205 or something like that? Or 205. How tall are the people in your weight class? Oh, they're my weight Stand class. Stand up real quick. <laughs> this guy's a giant. That's what I'm saying. 31. Yeah. Right? You're you should way. not be a 205. You're in the wrong way. <laughs> All right. So, so, so the <laughs> why are you powerlifting? Uh, I enjoy. Yeah. Okay. How good do you want to be? What was How good do you want to be? Uh, really good. Well, <laughs> so then the, the 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 question you have to ask yourself is self: Do I want to be the best powerlifter that I can be? Because if so, you're a heavyweight. At minimum, you're a 264. <laughs> Optimally, you're 264 plus. Uh, and if you're the tallest person in your weight class, you're in the wrong weight class. And so I'm a, I'm a 93, and I'm in the wrong weight class. So I'm the, I'm the tallest guy back there. I feel like I should be starting in the NBA. When I walk around, I'm like, oh, what's up? Man? Look at all these. And I've never felt tall in my entire life until I started powerlifting. So that's the long answer. And I think it's interesting that you said, I've gained, uh, I, my lifts are going up and so I've gained weight. That's not a Cause how I would, cause, cause how I would phrase it is you've gained weight and so your lifts have gone up. Yeah. And you're how old? 19. So this is like, you're in the prime of your life and everyone's, everyone's kind of laughing or whatever. You're in the prime of your life. We're all jealous, man. To take, yeah, to take advantage of this and not gain a bunch of fat and whatever. You can gain weight and get super strong. I'm talking about pulling 700, eight, you know, 16 months from now or less. All right, but you have to gain weight. And so this meat coming up doesn't matter. And I know that sounds, you're like, wait, what? My whole, my whole year is based on this meat. No, 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 five years from now, when you're 264, 264 plus, and you're, you know, your first attempt is eight, you know, 40 something. <laughs> that's what matters. And you have, that's at, in yes. your potential, that's in your grasp, should you choose to accept it. All right, so my recommendation would be, give yourself three years to gain weight, train like hell, and if at that point you're 22, you don't really like what's going on, you have other incentives, other values that you'd rather train for, then change it. But don't keep yourself, don't blunt your strength training because you want to fit into my weight class. I know that all too well. As a 181, my best total was like 1340 something, yeah. whatever, and my best total as a 198 is 1795. I went up one weight class and my total jumped up by that much. Not the first meet, but over you know two and a half, three years. And if I went to 231, there's no doubt that I'm breaking 2000, right? And so I think thinking longer term is probably what your coach should be telling you. And if not, that's what we're telling you. Yep. Yeah. So, cause how tall are you, 6'3"? No, just six foot. Six foot, he looks like a genius. He looks taller than that, but. Yeah. Appears taller than stated height. Yes. yes. <laughs> yep. Don't cut, man. Yeah, Mike Tuscherer is one of the great, best 264s that we've ever had, previously the 275 class, right, in, U, in IPF and USAPL, and we're the same height. He's our height. Yeah, <laughs> he has the hips of a water buffalo, though. <laughs> like, like, is that bison or Tuscherer? And it's, it's Tuscherer, but then he goes and squats, you know, high 800s. Yeah. Used to, anyway, now he got hip injury, so he high barred 771 or something. Yep. 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 Exactly. Yep. Oh yep. my God, it's right. <sighs> Not drag. What does drag 
Okay. Shins forward into the bar. Hold. Knees out. Straighten your wrists out. Right there. Now squeeze your chest up. Big breath. Drag over the legs. Good. Better. Take a step back. Do it again. Another thing I want you to watch when you go to take the bar, your grip, don't do this. Yeah, because what's going to happen when you yank on the bar? What's going to happen? Yeah, so it, everything changes position. Yeah. So don't rest your hands on the bar like that, just straight. Yeah. Shins forward into the bar, hold. Knees out to your elbows, hold. Squeeze your chest up, right there. Drag the bar up your lips. Down. You guys notice though that I'm coaching only from the sides? Right? So as a coach, what can I see from the front on the deadlift? There, there is something, but what, 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 am I, what were we looking at? I can look at width of your feet, I can look at uh, your knees, but that's all I can see, and I'm in your way, right? So I do that, that's my first set, that's the only time I'm there, all right? Otherwise, I'm here, right from the side, which means where should you take your video from? Side, and it, that's for Instagram. This, this is for your coach. Instagram, coach, Insta yeah, okay, all right. As you notice, all my videos on Instagram are from the front. <laughs> Okay. Into the bar. Push it. There you go. Knees out. Squeeze. Good. Ready? Move your eyes out. Look, look out further. Yeah, there you go. Squeeze up. Good. Lift your hips up. Now, squeeze flat. Lift your hips up. You dropped them. Uh -uh. Down. All right, listen. I'm going to tell you to pull every rep. So don't pull before I tell you to. Okay? Lift your hips up. Right there. Now get off your toes. Squeeze your back flat. Now take your breath. Drag. That's your finish. Good. Two more like that. Next question was asked was about when I should lift during the day. What's the best time to lift? And is there any time of the day that I should avoid training? There's not necessarily a time to avoid lifting, but you got to train when you can make time to train. If you have all day, all night, once again, we are very jealous of you. Uh, <laughs> Please give and me when that. people typically, uh, people's tip performance typically tends to go up in the late afternoon, evening hours. Uh, if you can train around then, great. If you can't, what are you going to do about it? So, yeah, that's the uh, practical answer. The nuanced answer. Nuanced answer. There's some <laughs> evidence to suggest that about eight hours after rising, you have a, a good peak window for peak performance just based on your circadian rhythm. This also assumes that you have regular sleep schedules. Uh, and by that, I mean you go to sleep and you wake up about the same time on an average base, uh, daily basis. So that's why you know that three o'clock to four o'clock window seems to be so hot, not only because people's work schedule, but also you tend to perform uh, in general better then. So if you had to choose, it would be about eight hours after rising. If you don't get to choose, like everybody else, you get in when you fit in. Yeah. Good. Perfect. One more. One more. One more. You got to pull this in three seconds. Here we go. Three, two, one. Big breath. Pull. That's good. Just like that. Good. That's fine. So every when you're trying to condense a set, right? Make sure that you're just doing your reps. About a, a, that three seconds. So you're down there. Don't think about it. One, two, three. Breath. Pull. Otherwise, your set's 45 seconds, 50 seconds. It's a minute now. Like, and, and those are, at that point are singles versus a set of five. So the thing is, once you're at your doing your set, let's just get into it and get it done. Every rep. One, two, three. Breathe. Pull. Okay, that's good. Next question was from a guy talking in general about stress and recovery. He was a, said he was a 48-year-old guy who does four sets of six with 315 for the squat about once a week. He was kind of asking Austin and Jordan, where do I go from here? Uh, this training session usually beats me up, and I can't squat for at least another week. What do I do? All right, so, so the, thing is, the thing is this. You probably find that when something's heavy for you, okay, it beats you up for a long time, which is why you're telling us you need longer to recover. Yes? Now, let me, let me ask you a theoretical. What if uh, on day one for four sets of five, you squatted 275, and two days later, you squatted 265 for another three sets of five, and then on Friday, you worked up to one heavy set at 330. Think you could do that? Yeah. No. What if we lowered the weight on day two to 185? Yeah. And then, and then you have one heavy set on Friday. 
What I'm, what I'm saying is that your frequency woes, what you're telling us that you can only do once a week, is related to the intensity. And I think that if you're trying to set up long-term development, you're going to find that increased training frequency is what you're going to need to get the volume in. Because there's no way that you can focus it in one session. Because what's my next step up for you right now? Do five sets of six, six sets of six, you can't do it. So it needs to be spread over multiple sessions and the intensity needs to be regulated in such a way that you can recover from. So I think however big the drop has to be in intensity in order to get you to be able to train more frequently is ultimately how to, how to progress. So uh, for older people in general, I do not agree with training less. My main recommendation is to figure out how much the intensity has to drop down for you to train with a similar frequency, uh, but then add weight to the bar at regular intervals. So is that every week? Maybe. Every other week? Maybe so. But I, I think you should be squatting twice per week. I think you should be pulling twice per week. One might be a very light pull, okay? It might be a sub, like a RDL even, so it's lighter, and you should probably be pressing and benching a total of three to four times per week. So maybe that's two presses and two benches. But it's gotta be light enough where it's not killing you. And that's so hard for people to do. They're like, well, it's not heavy, why am I doing it? And it's like, well, this is recovery. And just training. You're adding a little stress. And I actually would say that in here, the stress recovery adaptation sort of cycle, it's the stress, you got a stress application and then you're starting to recover. And then if not, a, another stimulus doesn't come along soon enough, you actually detrain a little bit. So it's giving you a little bump, a little bump. So I think that's what it does. So my overall recommendation would be don't cut training frequency, but figure out what the intensity drop needs to be so you can train more often. And the, and the kind of programming template he was describing you could look into is like a heavy light medium yep. type deal. Yep. So just look up, Google that on our sites and stuff like that. You'll see a bunch of templates yep. um, as to, as to you know, a number of different ways in which you could possibly set that up. Yeah. Because training less is ultimately, is just, all it's going to be doing is realizing the strength that you've already built previously versus improving, which is fine. Look, I don't know, maybe you're, maybe you're a, a scratch golfer and you're just out there, you know, crushing long balls and just, you know, maybe that's what you want to do. But if you want to squat 405 for sets of five, then you need to train more. Finish the rep at the top. Open your hips up all the way at the top. Okay, stop for a second. Slow down. Let me set this next one down. Slow down. So, pull the bar back. You are going to need to actively pull the bar back into your legs. Okay? You feel that. When I'm standing up? The whole, during the whole lift. Okay. Actively pull it back into your legs. Okay. Okay? All right. And then stand up tall at the top. Okay. That's better. Good. One more, pull it back and that's a great deadlift. Very good. Yeah. Get a little closer to the bar right there. Okay. Good. Pull. Good. So, this is the problem. You see how he set the bar down. This is what I was mentioning earlier. He set the bar down in a way that the bar was way forward of the middle of his foot. So then he went to reset by putting his shins to the bar and then his hips are super low, right? Yep. So we need to fix you by having you pull the bar back over the middle of your foot before you pull your next rep. But I want you to do it without letting go of the bar this time because we need to train you to do it so you don't need to reset between every single. Good, set it down. Find that midfoot position. Bar back, hips up, hips up higher than that. There. Okay, set it down. So you see how you're you're setting it down out like this. Okay. You're doing this. Gotcha. Just send it back down your legs the same way it came up. You know what I mean? Okay. Good. Up, 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 up. You're Oops. dropping your hips a little too low right before the pull. Set it down again. Go ahead and grab the bar again. 
they stay here. They don't move from here. Drag it up, set it down, down the leg. So it's way forward. No, 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 no. Oh, sorry. Set it We're down, just... set it down, set it down. Now, you need to pull it back. And now you're in position. Set your back and drag. Set it down. Pull it back, hips up, and drag. You guys see how I'm having to re reconfigure him every rep on the way down. Hips up, bar back. Good. Drag. Let's do one more just to hammer it home. Hips up, hips up. Your hips are too low. There. There. Good. You guys see that? Okay. So that's the deal, as I mentioned, setting it down back as close as you can to the middle of the foot is important. If you set it down way over, over your toes and you don't think about pulling the bar back where it needs to be, you're going to be in a whole different position on each subsequent rep. And there's going to be no consistency. You're not going to know why you failed the next rep or whatever because your start position was all messed up. So we just need to practice, I mean, we'll have several more sets for you to work on this, to hammer in what your start position should be. Where your, your hips need to be way higher in the air than you want them to be. Okay? Sounds good. Yep.